What's going on YouTube? It's Mr. Ferguson here once again. Thank you guys for coming back for another video here in Central North Carolina to my lawn where I always like to say periodically that I am not a professional. I'm just a regular average homeowner here in Central North Carolina who came out one day and said, I wanna try to get one of these nice lawns like I see on the side of the road and see in other people's lawns. How do they do that? Uh, is it possible to do this on my own or do I have to hire somebody to do it? And it's led me to this point where we have this little YouTube channel here of just a regular guy trying to have a nice, thick, lush, fescue lawn and we've been pretty successful over the past several years you can do this i am a witness so thank you for those that continue to come back and watch these videos thank you for checking us out guys we're continuing on that roller coaster weather ride um uh, the day of filming this uh, we're filming it on a tuesday uh it is currently 39 degrees i'll put this little thing over here to my uh to my right or left here um here's the temperature it feels like 32 degrees it's just it's supposed to get up to maybe 48 today yesterday was not bad it got up to close to 60 but it's just it's like uh, we had these warm days in the high 60s 70s we had pollen coming out all over the place we were cutting and now it's just slowed right back down um the grass is growing though and so i really Really need to cut it today but it's going to be cold so i don't know if i'll get out here and do it uh it's not going to be so cold i can't cut it but man it is really growing we've had a lot of rain too so i don't know how mushy it is i'm gonna have to test it out this afternoon and see is it is it okay for me to, to throw the mower on the blades it needs to be cut but i did want to give you a quick update on the uh precision green shoots glyphosate we put on some of the weeds we can show you that. That's the other side thing we got going on in the lawn right now. I'm going to uh, flip it around and we'll look at some of the glyphosate weeds here and see is it being effective or not. So we're still, you know, obviously it's cold. So Miss Ferguson, I'm going to get her to do an update video. We've got some stuff here. I'm not even sure. I want to say maybe this is broccoli. I can't remember. She's got so much going on, uh, but she's got some more. Uh, she bought some more dirt the other day. She's got stuff on the inside. I'll walk here to look. You can see she's uh, during the day. It's so cold. She's got her little light and we've got our plants going right here. And uh, so she's like, you know, it's not marijuana, <laughs> but we're growing plants on the inside. So we're gonna get Miss Ferguson to uh, hopefully do updates and maybe she can release some stress on me and try to provide content all the time. We'll be able to update you on the edibles, the tomatoes, the, the, uh, uh, the fruit plants and vegetable plants. So in regards to the glyphosate, first coming over here to the POA, it is definitely now, you can see the blue, um, from the dye on the Poa annua. It is definitely brown. Um, and I'll quickly show you in a second the front yard where I also applied it on some Poa annua. But basically you can see the contrast from green lush fertilized to dying Poa annua that has been hit with the glyphosate. It's definitely, it's not withered up and dead. It's a yellowy um, brownish color. Um, as you can see right here, I'll give you a little close up and, and hold still for a little bit, but it's still there and it's still got seed heads. So these seed heads can still fall and make POA come back again. In regards to the POA triv guys, look, I mean, it's been over a week. So I hear, I hear you when you said, Mr. Ferguson, you're way overreacting. It takes forever for it to work. This thing looks just as good as it did the day I applied it. If anything, it's grown because the tip right here is where I put it on. It's grown. So it's not dyed. Um, maybe a little bit, maybe down in here, we see a little bit of brown. I don't know if that y'all can see that. Um, it's, it has been raining, but it is not browning up. It is not hurting this poetry. I am shocked. I mean, it's been a week and we've applied it twice. So obviously it could take more time. Not saying that more time will not uh, result in uh, more death, but as far as this poetry, it, it's not that's why I bought it, and it seems to uh, to just be uh, laughing at it. So that is the, the results of this. The Poa annua, it seems to be dying off, but the Poa trib, as you can see, it still looks, uh, still looks like it did before. So we'll continue to watch it, and I'll continue to give you an update on it. While we're here, the other good thing to see is this is one of the sections right here that I pulled out a bunch of Poa trib and uh, that grass is coming in. It's growing with the fertilizer, with the warmer temps, it's growing. Probably not now so much because it's gotten cooler, but they are filling in, but there is other areas where it's still baby grass. We got leaves that always wanna fall into the hole. And uh, so we got lots of holes uh, that we're trying to fill in as we cut the grass. You know, we got baby grass, like right here, there's some of the baby grass. Now it is young grass. And if it gets hot real fast, which is very possible, 
you see all that baby grass and these little holes that we've uh, through some triple threat seed. Uh, we want it to come up. We want to try to take care of this baby grass, but we'll have to uh, give it some RGS, give it the nutrients it needs, and hope it can make it through the spring. The clover that we sprayed the 2,4-D, uh, it is just completely wasted and gone. The deer have been coming and munching on these plants right here, uh, but the clover and all of the weeds, uh, it took it out. I did put some of that uh, precision glyphosate on this little clover here, and it looks like it is not happy. It is withering away but it's still noticeable and you can tell it's still clover um, unlike 24 d and right here um, uh, this is definitely browning up some you can tell especially when it was rainy yesterday it does not look happy um, it's withering away again this is the poa annua compared to some of the poa back here that didn't get it um, it, it looks you know it looks pretty healthy and normal this is looking brown and yellowy and sad so that's what we want to see in that poa trib it's just not happening yet so so i will see if i can get a mow in and if not we'll we'll talk about something else here in a second but if i do man look at that that that, that grass seed is coming in real nice so as soon as we cut this thing down even more this good grass this triple threat right here um, should start filling in so that's what i want to see it'll just hopefully it won't die off in the summertime but anyways uh, yeah this is probably a four four and a half inch uh lawn right now and it is so perked up um i don't know if you guys can tell that um coming off this way the grass is just uh nice and thick and just it is perky looking look at that it's just standing straight up with that fertilizer uh ready to be mowed so it needs to be cut so hopefully we'll be able to do that this afternoon all right, guys, so I may or may not get to mowing this this afternoon, but uh, something just popped up. Thank you, Jesus, that he, uh, he always provides content. Um, this just popped up as an email, and I want to go over something from NC State Extension. I've mentioned it briefly here on the channel before. I'm not a professional, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, um, but NC State Extension has something called Turf Files, and they release this out. I've subscribed to them, so I get the emails, and I check in on their website every now and then, and uh, they just released one. I like to go over it because it actually pertains to what I just showed you in my lawn as far as the poetry a triv in the glyphosate and so uh their their topic today uh, from five days ago written by mr grady miller he says what are the yellow patches of grasses and cool season grasses in spring and he said and i'm just going to quickly go over this um, because we got some facts here about poa triv from an expert not from a diy guy uh, like you see here he said one of the most common questions in spring is what are the yellow patches of grass in my tall fescue? He calls it yellow, I call it limey, like a light green color, so I think that's what he means, but he says yellow. Um, uh, this is a very common problem that most turf type tall fescue lawns have to varying degrees. The plant is rough bluegrass, which is known as rough stock bluegrass, or by its botanic name, Poa trivialis. The grass likes the cooler weather of fall and spring and is typically most aggressive in shady lawns with moist to saturated saturated soils. So there you go. There's your first fact. Number one, if you have a super shady yard, you're more susceptible to Poa trivialis. It says right here. And then secondly, he says it's most aggressive there um, and with moist to saturated soils. Again, we've talked about overwatering. If you don't have proper drainage in your lawn and it's constantly holding moisture for long periods of time, I've really noticed that on the left side. Coincidentally, I don't have so much, but right by my spigot, I've noticed I do have poa triv there. That makes sense now. And then on the right side of my lawn, it likes to be kind of damp. That's exactly where I'm having all the poa problems on that right side. It's very, that's it's the most moist place in my lawn is the right side and that's exactly what I just told you in a couple videos where I see a lot of the poa triv problems. He goes on, rough grass, rough bluegrass is a type of bluegrass that is impossible to selective, selectively remove from tall fescue. We talked about that. Speed zone, all these different products, it, you cannot get one that will kill poa trivialis. It is impossible. It's not, but I found this part interesting here in a second. I'll show you what I mean. The good news is this plant tends to be a problem only in spring and sometimes in fall. It tends to disappear when temperatures rise in late spring, early summer. The bad news is you just have to look at it in spring and there is no selective chemical control. This is exactly why I've been going around cutting it out, why you guys have talked about it. And if you don't do a wide enough circle, it, it just continues to pop right back up and spread. It is very difficult to handle. Um, but this is the part that I found interesting. He says in, in the 1980s, rough bluegrass was developed 
as a golf course overseeding grass as well as grass that could be grown in shady areas. Did you catch his wording there? Now, I don't know if he meant to say this, but he says in the 1980s, rough bluegrass was developed. That means it's a problem that man made. <laughs> we made that problem. He says it was developed as a golf course overseeding grass. So it was created. It was not a thing. We developed it as a grass by putting these two cultivars or whatever together. And we created poetry as, uh, as human beings. So that's, mind-blowing to me. I thought it was a natural weed that just is a nuisance, but no, we created it, uh, if his wording here is correct. Moving on, it still has limited use as an overall turf grass, overseed turf grass, or as a component of some shady grass mixtures, but usually when it appears in tall fescue, it came in as a seed contaminant. We've talked a lot about here on the channel. We use GCI turf. We use um, triple threat. These are blue tag. Well, GCI turf is technically not blue tag, but they are 0% weed. No weeds in this uh, seed blend. Uh, you do have Jonathan Green uh, that has a little bit of weed seed. Scott's has a little bit of weed seed, and they're saying these can be contamin contaminants in certain types. Type of grasses and he tells us why here in a second it says how does rough bluegrass seed get into tall fescue well unfortunately there is a lot of naturalized rough bluegrass growing throughout the seed production areas of Oregon for years Oregon allowed open field burning but about 13 years ago producers were required to transition to mechanical and chemical methods of managing post-harvest residues the seed industry has found it very difficult to totally eliminate rough bluegrass plants in production fields and is challenging to remove bl bluegrass seeds during the cleaning process. I've heard this in the grapevine and talking with different people and even on YouTube that basically, once again, when it says they were forced to, that means there was government regulations, it sounds like, that said you can't burn anymore. When they go to clean the grass seed that they sell to us, it is more difficult because they're not totally killing the poetry and other things and so it can get into the seed. And so uh, that's that's why we're seeing it. And uh, he says, so the consumer continues to experience the effect of rough bluegrass seeds in some tall fescue seed bags. The rough bluegrass seeds are small. And if a bag of tall fescue has 0.5% rough bluegrass seed and other or and other crop seed is what it's mentioned as that can translate to 20 to 25 bluegrass uh, seed per square feet of lawn the first year after these seeds germinate the small plants may not be very visible uh, since rough bluegrass spreads via short stalins, the area they occupy can continue to spread until they are noticed. That's why we talk about um, not to, dis, uh, to downgrade Jonathan Green or Scott's or anything. We just talked about my dad's Southern uh, Gold Mix, and I think it's 0.5 or 0.3% other crop seed. Um, but we try to go with a zero weeds, weed free seed so we're not sowing weeds back into the lawn. We have less of a chance of putting poetry in our lawn, and that's why we push. GCI turf, triple threat, those type uh, other grass seeds. Black Beauty has, I think, 0.7 or 0.5, excuse me. I don't want to misquote it. You'll have to check the label, but check the label of your grass seed. Even if you guys that are saying, I'm seeding this spring, I'm going for it, I'm going to make it through check don't be sowing uh, weed seeds into your lawn some companies we had Jonathan Green comment on one of my videos and they said yes we do have a small number but uh, the thickness of the grass thickens up so much it chokes out all the weeds so there's different opinions out there I just thought it would be interesting to give you some facts if you have a shady lawn back here it was very shady in my back lawn and I ended up cutting down a couple trees I ended up cutting down some branches to allow more sunlight in because on the edges is where my GCI turf type tall fescue struggled and that's why we put Jonathan and green back there since then it's pretty much as we saw this past summer it's thickened up it's been fine and uh, allowing more sunlight in dries it up quicker as well so remember he, ju he just said it uh, mr grady miller said if you got a really wet soil that stays wet consistency you're you're subject for poa triv in the spring and in the fall and if you have a lot of shade Shade can be good sometimes, especially in the hot summer. It cools down the grass. It can be good and can be bad. So I thought we would just overview that real fast. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope this has been informative and informational for you. I learned something. Hope you've learned something. Let me know your comments below about poetry, and we'll work on uh, doing an overview because hopefully between today and tomorrow, I'll be mowing this lawn. We'll do an overview, but we'll get into another lawn care subject soon. God bless you. I'm going inside to warm up. Hope it warms up soon where you are. God bless you. We'll see you next time.